Hi and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. One of the most joyous occasions you can make a card for is for a brand new baby. And today we're going to take an angle on the designer series paper to create an adorable card. And as always, I've got lots of tips to share with you along the way. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and next to it, click that small bell icon, which will give you notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. This is a piece of flirty flamingo cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by 11. I did score it in a half right before you joined me. I'm gonna fold on that score line and I like to reinforce it with my bone folder. And I'm gonna create the background to this card first. And since I know I wanna stamp it like a wallpaper type effect, I wanna protect my work surface since I'm gonna be going off the edges. I'm gonna be using the Versamark ink pad, which is a watermark pad. This is gonna leave a really nice subtle tone on tone finish. And I chose a heart from another stamp set. One of the great things about owning inventory of stamps is that you're able to borrow images from one stamp set or another to complement your cards. And I loved this heart. This is the Check You Out stamp set. Really, really cute, isn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this heart and I'm gonna ink it up in the Versamark ink. And I'm gonna be stamping it in various different directions to create what looks like patterned paper, even though it's not. You wanna take your time with the Versamark, especially with a solid stamp, because you wanna make sure you get a really nice crisp image. I'm gonna set this aside for right now, and I wanna work on a piece of designer series paper next, which is gonna be housed on one of the layers of the card. This designer series paper comes from a beautiful stack called From My Heart. And like most of the designer series papers with Stampin' Up, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options. But since I'm gonna be making a baby card, I'm gonna go ahead and use the hearts on this. Now I have cut this the width of three and three quarters already, because I know that's gonna fit on the layer to my card. But I wanted to create a really fun, interesting angle on here. I've got my paper trimmer here. The gray blade is for scoring. The dark blade is for cutting. And I love that they move up and down out of the way so that you can use them easily. I'm gonna want about a one inch stop point here and about a two inch here. And you can certainly measure it using your grid paper or a ruler, but I'm just gonna eyeball this. So knowing I want this end higher, I'm gonna open up my cutting track. And this black area here is actually where the blade travels, so I know where it's going to fall. So I'm gonna kind of navigate this paper. So I've got a deeper edge here and a shallower edge here, and then I'm gonna use that dark blade and I'm just gonna slice, and that's gonna give us this angle. I'll be using my silicone craft sheet to add the adhesive to the back side. The silicone craft sheet is wonderful when you're using adhesives, liquid glue, or hot glue because it will not stick to it. You can simply rub it right off, which means I'm gonna keep my work surface nice and sticky free. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here, and this is where I'm going to house that designer series paper. So I'm looking to line up the bottom and the sides the best that I can. Now, before I get too far, I decided I wanted to decorate this edge. Now, obviously that's optional, but I wanted to give you some tips about that, especially since it's on an angle. I've cut a piece of red ribbon, this beautiful grow grain, and this is about four inches. I'm gonna be actually using my adhesive on the ends, or of course you can use glue dots if you prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that right here on my silicone craft sheet, and then we'll flip that around and we'll do the other side as well. That'll allow me now to take this cardstock and lay this ribbon right where I want it. So it's gonna be either above it or below it, depending on how you'd like it. I'm gonna go above this time and I'm gonna tack that down. And then I'm gonna put those raw ends to the back. When you're working with an angle, it's much easier to cut a small strip than trying to go all the way around the card because you would have to add adhesive in numerous sections to keep it in place. Not only that, it's gonna save you quite a bit of ribbon that's never gonna be seen from the front of your card. I'm gonna take this piece now and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side, working around my edges. You can also add adhesive right over those ribbon areas once again to keep those tacked down to that next layer we're going to add this to. And this is a piece of real red cardstock. And this is gonna leave a very narrow margin of color all the way around. And then once you have it where you want it, go ahead and press that in place. Now we're gonna come back to this. I wanted to use this adorable baby image from the stamp set called Witty Sisms. The stamp set has been used on my channel before and I absolutely love these images because they're super easy to color and they make quick, adorable cards. You're gonna be able to find this stamp set and the mini catalog with Stampin' Up. Now just before you join me, I 
took a piece of thick whisper white cardstock and I used one of my brand new favorite dies set. This is called Stitched So Sweetly. Now, one of the reasons I love it is the cascading sizes of these adorable scalloped and stitched frames. And you've got some other images here. So great to house greetings as well as images for your stamps. I've die cut that ahead of time and I'm gonna be using my Memento Black ink pad. I've chosen this ink pad since I'm going to be actually coloring this with alcohol-based markers. Now you're gonna notice that I turned my image horizontally because it's way easier for me to stamp straight this way versus going up and down. And then this is gonna get stamped right here in the center. I have an image that's already finished, but I wanted to talk you through a little bit about the use of the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers. Now you can buy them individually, or you can buy them as a color combination, which will give you the light and the dark shade. I prefer to use the lightest color first. That's just a personal preference. And they're dual-ended, so you can choose either the thick or the thin side. You're gonna color this in just like you would any dye-based regular marker. So your first layer is just going to be the color of the marker itself. Don't be worried about coloring it in exactly. Leaving some white areas is totally acceptable. I do recommend that you give this a few seconds for that alcohol to evaporate before you add down your next layer or the shade because I find it blends much better that way and you risk bleeding. So I'm gonna come in now with a darker shade. This is Flirty Flamingo and I'm gonna work some color on this side of that baby buggy. That will need to evaporate as well for just a few seconds. And then what you can do is come back in with the lighter shade and we're gonna pull these colors together. So I'm gonna take from the dark and pull into the light. Now keep in mind the paper is going to be wet until that alcohol evaporates. And then when it does, you're gonna have more of its true tone and you're gonna be able to see the dark from the light looking more blended than defined. And as I said, I have one that's already finished that's here. So let me just talk you through the colors. So that was the Flirty Flamingo. This was the real red for the heart and the border. And then I used the soft sea foam for some grassy areas underneath my buggy. My next step is to go ahead and add this image to my card. And I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna be using my full size dimensionals. I'm a big fan of making sure these are well balanced on my images so that they hold up well going through the postage machine at the post office. I wanna make sure that it comes out nice and sturdy, so I use them generously. I'll be using my Take Your Pick pickup tool. I've got the paper piercing tool attachment, and then I'll just wrangle off those backings. And I love this tool for this because it keeps everything corralled and easy to remove. This image now is gonna go all the way over to the right-hand side of this layer. And then once you're happy with the positioning, go ahead and tack that in place. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add more dimensionals to this layer. I love dimensionals because they give your card a very professional elevation. Once you have those positioned, you can go ahead and take off those paper backings as well. And remember that card base that we created with that heart background? Well, now that the Versamark ink has dried, you can see it leaves a really pretty watermark and subtle background. I'm gonna house this right in the center of that card base. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a small bow. I cut about nine inches of that exact same ribbon and I made a bow here and I'm gonna use glue dots this time to attach it. So I have my glue dots here and I'm gonna peel back one I'm gonna take the back side of my knot and I'm gonna press that right on top of that glue dot and then I'm going to lift. That's going to place the glue dot right on top of our bow knot and then I can position this right on that strip where I want it. Now I did choose to add one other embellishment to this card to play up that designer series paper and part of the image in our baby buggy. And that would be these. These are the heart epoxy droplets and you can see they come in a variation of sizes. Now I've got some here that are left over that I'm going to use and I wanna show this to you. I actually had tested coloring these with my Stampin' Blends alcohol marker. So you can change the color of these clear epoxy shapes into any color that you choose. Choose. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift one of these smaller ones up. There's a glue dot already on the back, which makes them really easy to use. And although they may not seem very visible here on that white layer, in person, they're really quite stunning because there's a little bit of texture there. And like I said, if you want to color them, just let them dry for a few seconds and then you can add them to that white layer just to give it a little bit more color. That's just another tip for you. But there we have our completed card. Isn't this cute? And that angle really creates a lot of interest here. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day.